This video is going to teach you how to create viewport animations in GLayerStud app. From simple zooms to flyovers, following line features, drawing camera paths, and more, this tutorial is going to teach you everything you want to know about viewport animations. Let's start with a simple zoom in. I'm going to move the play app to 25 frames here. I'm going to click add item at current time, move the play head above this item, and I'll click fit viewport on the Egypt feature. You can, of course, adjust it however you want to make it look a bit more interesting. You could right click and drag to pitch the viewport a bit. And that's it. We've got our first zoom in and the zoom out at the end of the item. Now, to make this a bit more interesting, we can change the easing. So we could make it a bit snappier or we could choose back in and out to have this sort of like overshooting motion. And then we can, of course, make the animation a bit longer, easy as that. Next up, we're going to create a flyer from Dublin to Liverpool. So therefore, I'm double clicking the layer here to create an item. I'm going to extend this a bit. And while having it selected and moving my play head to, to where I want to split it, I can click Cut Items or use the C key to cut the selected items. Now I have two viewport items with and transition in between. So I'm going to move the playhead over my first viewport item. And on the Dublin feature, I click Fit Viewport. Then I move the playhead over my second item. And on the Liverpool feature, I'm going to click Fit Viewport. And this is how we have created this nice flyover from Dublin to Liverpool. Now, apart from changing the duration and the easing of our animation, there's uh, one more thing on viewport animations. So you can see that GLIS automatically zooms out, moves the camera over to the other um, feature. But you can change that with the interpolation type. So this is by default set to fly to, but you can also set this to straight. And what this is going to do is going to like move on a straight line to Liverpool here. And combined with the back in and out, this can also be a pretty cool effect. Now, in the next example, we're going to orbit around a peak of uh, a mountain. So I'm going to create a viewport item again and um, extend the length a bit here. And with my playhead over this item, I'm going to like really change the viewport. So you can really hold down control or right click and drag to change the pitch and the bearing to have this very cool um, pitched look. And then what we're going to do is select the viewport item and add the orbit round animator. And what this gives us is this slowly automatically orbiting motion. Once you have applied this animator, you can also change its properties. So for example, you could make the orbit a bit slower by increasing the duration here. Or maybe you want to orbit in the other direction. So you can simply set the amplitude to minus 360. Feel free to like play around with all the settings to achieve different results. Next up. We have a line feature of the New York City Marathon, and we're going to follow this track. So this would be a pretty complex animation, but it's very easy to do with GLRs. We're going to create two items here, and we're going to make the, the transition duration quite long here. We're going to select both of the viewport items, and then we're going to have a look at the follow feature properties here. So here we can select our feature, the New York City Marathon line. Then I'm going to select only one of the features and we're going to set a progress of this feature. So I'm going to let me zoom in a bit more to um, make this a bit clearer. So the progress is kind of like the progress of this line. And as I move this slider, we're following along this feature in a, like in a smooth out way. So let's say we want to begin kind of like here. And on the last feature, I still have the progress at like 100%. 
Um, and if I move there, I will also, of course, change the, the zoom a bit to zoom a bit more in. And now we are really following this feature. But what we can also do is we can like rotate the camera along the feature. So I'm going to make sure that I select both of the items and check the auto bearing checkbox here. And then we can also like increase the pitch. And we have this very nice following movement of that track. Now, apart from like extending the duration of this animation, um, we can also change the easing to like not having this speed up and um, speed down. We can set this to uniform and this will make it like a uniform animation along this track. What you can also experiment with is like decreasing the accuracy a bit to make this even smoother. So just like experiment a bit with these values. But what if we don't have a line feature to follow? We're going to create one. So I'm double clicking the map, click add drawing layer. I'm going to change the type to a line right there. And then I'm going to start drawing this line out. So I'm going to start just clicking at the beginning and the end, and then I'm going to add um, the ones in between. And by holding control and dragging this out, I'm going to like really give it the Bezier handles that it needs here. Now we can use the same technique as before. We're going to create two items. I'm going to split this up here extend the duration, select both of them, use our drawing layer now, and then I'm going to like change the zoom here a bit. And of course, we're going to begin at the start of our line. So this might be zoomed in too much. And at the end, I want to be Oops, select this feature, of course. I'm going to be zoomed in a bit more. And then we can also like change the bearing here for our first feature. And also here for our last feature. Now you have very fine grain control over your animation. So select the drawing layer. Then unlink the control view here so that you can really like zoom out and you can now see what the camera is doing here, where it's moving along. And you can really like take your, your Bezier points and drag them around and um, the preview will update in real time, of course, right? So you have super fine grain control over the animation and you can really adjust it as you're animating. So this all works in real time. Now the next technique is pretty handy if you're like building a lot of template projects and working in news workflows or something like that. So let's say we want to create a zoom in to a specific region here. So we could just fit the viewport or of course like change it manually, something like that. But what we can also do is um, we set the follow feature layer to South Australia. And the mode, instead of following a line, is going to be fit feature. So now we're really fitting this feature, which is South Australia by now. But what we can now do, if you save this sort of like as a template project, um, you can head over and um, if you have like different... Uh, regions here, you can simply drag them onto this layer and it will, of course, swap out the highlight and the zoom in animation is also in place. So you can like, for example, add the label and you're good to go to render this out. Last but not least, you can create pretty complex animations by chaining multiple items and uh, let them continuously flow through. So we have this hiking trail here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 
first viewport as a start starting point and I'm like manually changing this, like zooming in a bit. And as our our trail buildup moves along, we're gonna create multiple items. Let's say I wanna be kind of like here, I wanna have it zoomed out a bit and I wanna look into the valley a bit. Then I'm gonna like create a next item and as we flow along, I'm moving and really adjusting it. Now, once you're done with this, you have this step-by-step -step animation. And we don't want that. We want to have this like continuously. So what you can do is select all of your um, intermediate items and like really extend the transition duration to like have it over the whole length of the item. And then we're going to change the easing to uniform. And this will create a uniformly flowing animation through all of these items that you have here. And GeoLayers is going to take care about smooth transitions between them. If you unselect all of the items, you're going to get the timeline, so the global timeline properties. And the smoothing in between these items can be set up here. So if you don't want it, you can really decrease this value so you don't have that much smoothing between the items. But I'd recommend just leaving it at 100%. It makes your animations like, of course, smoother. And that's a wrap. This is how you can create very simple to pretty complex viewport animations in glayers.app.